Yeah. <laughs> 
Endeavors in devotional service are never baffled, nor is there failure. A slight beginning of such activities is sufficient even to deliver a person from the great ocean of material fears. As a highly potent drug injected intravenously acts at once on the whole body, the transcendental topics of the Lord injected through the ear of the pure devotee of the Lord can act very efficiently. And realization of the transcendental messages implies total realization, just as fructification of one part of a tree implies fructification of all other parts. This realization for a moment in the association of pure devotees like Sukadeva Goswami prepares one's complete life for eternity. And this, and, and thus the sun fails to rob the pure devotee of his duration of life, inasmuch as he is constantly busy in the devotional service of the Lord, purifying his existence. Death is a symptom of the material infection of the eternal living being. Only due to material infection is the eternal living entity subjected to the law of birth, death, old age and disease. The materialistic way of pious activities like charity is recommended in the Smriti Shastras, as quoted by Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, money given in charity to a suitable person is guaranteed bank balance in the next life. Such charity is recommended to be given to a Brahmana. If the money is given in charity to a non-Brahmana, Without brahminical qualification, the money is returned in the next life in the same proportion. If it is given in charity to a half-educated brahmana, even then the money is returned double. If the money is given in charity to a learned and fully qualified brahmana, the money is returned a hundred and a thousand times. And if the money is given to a Veda, a Veda Parada, one who has factually realized the path of the Vedas, it is returned by unlimited multiplication. The ultimate end of Vedic knowledge is realization of the personality of Godhead, Lord Krishna, as stated in the Bhagavad Gita. There is a guarantee of money being returned if given in charity, regardless of the proportion. Similarly, a moment passed in the association of a pure devotee by hearing and chanting the transcendental message of the Lord is a perfect guarantee for eternal life, for returning home back to Godhead. Madhdam Gatva Punar Janma Navajate. In other words, a devotee of the Lord is guaranteed eternal life. A devotee's old age or disease in the present in the present life is but an impetus to such guaranteed eternal life. Om Ajnana Tamaranda Syakyanam Chana Shalakaya Chatsura Nilita Geta Tasman Shri Guru Vedama 
Bancha Kralpa Kalupya Shya Kripa Sindhu Bani Vacha Patita Nam Pavani Yo Vaishnavibyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadatha Shri Vasati Kaur Bhakta Vindra Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ramana Hare Ramana 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 Hare Translation again. Both by the rising and setting, the sun decreases the duration of life of everyone except one who utilizes his time in discussing topics of the all-good personality of Godhead. So Sukadeva Goswami is all rugged. Uh, Shamakarishi is speaking. Shamakarishi. Shamakarishi is the head of the sages in the Nainasharanya forest. So the sages in Nainasharanya, they all gathered they all come to Nainasharanya to perform sacrifice because they knew that Kali Yuga was approaching. So, uh, Samakarishi is Hare Krishna. Samakarishi is glorifying the process of hearing the glories of Lord Krishna. Samakarishi wants to impress on Sutta Goswami and all the sages present that the, the real goal of life is achieved by chanting and hearing the glories of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. As he describes in the verse, if we are not engaged in the activities of devotional service, then we are simply engaged in material activities which reduce, reduce the duration of life. As the sun rises and sets, it's another day gone and we're nearer to death, right? Some of may say, I am 25 years old, but actually they're 25 years dead because we're moving nearer to death every day. So how to avoid this situation we have to avoid it by getting ourselves free from the material world. We have to get out from this material world. And the process to get out, to get liberation from the material world, is by engaging in the activities of devotional service, which we begin with hearing and chanting. So that is the, the uh, important activity of devotees when they come together to associate with each other, that we come together to chant the glories of the Lord and to uh, hear and discuss topics in relation to the Lord. The Vedic literature are in three divisions. There is Sambandha, Abhidaya, and Prajna. Sambandha means knowledge of the relationship between the Lord and the living entities. Abhidaya refers to the process by which we can practice this not apply the knowledge. And Prajna refers to the goal of the knowledge. So Sambandha knowledge of the relationship that is given in the course of Bhagavad Gita and here also in Srimad Bhagavatam there's a lot of Sambandha Dhyana knowledge about the relationship of the, the Lord with the living entities. We learn that there is one master, one supreme controller and all others are his servants. So our position is subordinate to Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead and all others 
uh, is subordinates. Uh, so we are described in the Bhagavad Gita, we are the energy of Krishna. We are not the Supreme Lord, we're simply the energy of Krishna. The relationship is like the relationship between a fire and a spark. So the spark has heat and light, but it doesn't have heat and light like the fire. They're one in quality, but different in quantity. The fire is big, and the spark is very small. So the living entity is like that in relation to the Supreme Lord. The Supreme Lord is like the big fire, and we are like the spark. So when the spark comes out from the fire, then the spark can easily be extinguished. If the spark falls into the water, then it will lose its heat and light. If the spark falls on dry grass, then the spark may ignite the grass and burn the grass and may make a fire. But it depends on how the spark, how it affects the grass. So the living entity, his position in relation to the Lord is like that. We are like the spark depends on our association. Just like the spark, if it falls in the water, it will lose its heat and light very quickly. In the same way, the living entities will lose their spiritual qualities very quickly if we associate with people who are not in devotional service. If they're not uh, in, in self, in the path of self realization, then if we associate intimately with them, then we become affected by their association. Of course, we have to associate with ordinary people, common people, but we don't have to associate intimately with them. We have to be conscious of what is their condition, what is their position. And just like people are very careful with COVID, they don't want to go out, right? When there's COVID, people stay at home. They don't want to go out because if they go out, they meet people and they will get infected. Just like in China just now, nobody's going out. Everybody's at home. They just stay at home. They're afraid to go out because everywhere, everyone has got some kind of virus or disease. And you go out, you meet people, you can easily get the infection. In the past, there was similarly a thing called typhoid, right? And typhoid, it, and typhoid is very contagious. And there was this one person, there was the one it, her, it was a woman, her name was Mary, and when, you know, and she didn't know she had the typhoid, but she was carrying the disease, and everywhere she went, people, they got the disease, they all got infected by her, and she didn't know she had the disease, just like some people have COVID, but they have no effects, they're not having any effect, but they can give it to other people. So, association in the spiritual platform is also like that. You associate with materialistic people, we can become affected by them. And if you associate with spiritually advanced people, we can become greatly benefited by their association. So Srila Prabhupada is telling us how uh, in the Smriti Shastras it describes the different benefits you get by giving charity to different people. Right? 
when you give charity to an ordinary brahmana, it will come back an equal amount. But you give charity to one who is a, a learned brahmana, then it will come back a hundred times or a thousand times. And if you give charity to someone who is a Veda Parayana, who has actually realized the, the goal of all the Vedas, then the charity can come back an unlimited amount of time. So, of course, people like that. Well, that sounds like good business, right? <laughs> In Hindi, they say, Ek paisa dega daslak malega. <laughs> That's good interest, right? We like that kind of interest. So you can get that kind of interest by association. When you can get the association of the devotee, like Sukadeva Goswami. If you can meet Sukadeva Goswami, then he can give that kind of benefit. So, uh, Maharaj Pariksha, he is very fortunate. He is been able to meet Sukadeva Goswami. And Sukadeva Goswami is able to describe the glories of the Lord. Of course, it's not only just association, but we have to also take advantage of the association. We have to, we have to be receptive to this message. To healing from the devotees. It's not just simply mechanical. It depends everything Prabhupada writes in the nectar of instruction, in the preface of the nectar of instruction. He said everything depends on the attitude of the person. Now what is our attitude? Now some people are inimical, some people have no interest they don't want. So, of course, even they meet somebody like Sukadeva Goswami, they won't take advantage. Just like Srila Prabhupada met many people. Not everybody took advantage. Not everybody wanted to take advantage. So that the free will of the living entity is also there. Even though you may meet the nice advanced elevated person like Sukadeva Goswami, do we want to take up the spiritual path? Are we looking for the enlightenment or the guidance? Of course, Maharaj Pariksit, he was very receptive because he knows he has limited time left. He has only seven days left to live. So he's very careful to utilize his time for the highest purpose. He wants to prepare himself, just like before exams, right? Before exams, the student will prepare themselves, right? Before the exams, you want to be ready for the exam. And so the same way in human life, we have the examination at the time of death. That you have to be have to be ready to Buying gold in the 
shops, but you cannot buy any time. In China, they have sayings about this. They say that you can buy an inch of gold, but you cannot buy an inch of time. And time also moves very fast. They say time moves like an arrow. You, you don't see the arrow. You know, you, it, it, it moves so fast. It just, it, right? The so time is like that. It's going very fast. So we have to be very conscious of every moment to use time very carefully for spiritual progress. So Srila Prabhupada refers to the verse from Bhagavad Gita. Vaya vasayatmika puti ekeha kuru nandana. Those who are on this path are resolute in determination and their aim is one. We have to be like that, focused in order to achieve the success in life. We have, but, but the verse goes on, Bahusha kahyanantascha budayo vaya vasayana. Those who, in the minds of those who are irresolute, intelligence is many branch. In other words, if we're not focused, you have to be resolute, very fixed on what you want to achieve. You have to know the goal. It should be very clear about what is the goal. And we have to be very much attentive and uh, careful to focus on that goal. And then you can achieve. But if we're thinking, oh, a little here, and sometimes this, and something, you know, then splayed, the intelligence becomes splayed, many branches. So not the same effect. So this is the warning which Srila Prabhupada is giving here, that every moment gone, he can never buy it back. It's gone forever. So time is something very precious. So we do like to use the time very carefully to try to achieve the most important thing. So this is the point of this verse which is spoken here today. Very well-known verse, very important verse. Because certainly we know the sun is mounting the wheel of time. The sun mounts the wheel of time. The sun god is riding his chariot around the wheel of time. And the sun is rising and setting. We don't realize another day passes and is lost. So the, the uh, Shonaka Rishi is imploring all the sages and Sutta Goswami. He's imploring them, you know, be careful, don't waste time. Don't waste time. Use the time very carefully, very cautious. And this, this point, of course, is made in several places in the Srimad Bhagavatam. Uh, for example, it stated that duties executed by all people are only so much useless labor if they do not promote attraction for the personality of God. Shrama Evahi Kevalam Useless labor. When we do something, if, if, if it's useless, we think I wasted all my time and energy to do that. No benefit. I didn't get any benefit. So useless labor. So this way that we're being encouraged to be conscious, to be conscious of how we use our time, to use our time carefully, to develop attraction for hearing and remembering Krishna. So when we do that, that is. That is time which goes into our spiritual bank account. Material bank accounts are finished with the body. But the spiritual bank account is the time 
which you lose in devotion of sentence. That is eternal benefit. Whatever progress we make in our devotion of sentence, it goes on in the next life. But whatever profit you made, whatever wealth we have acquired in this life is finished with the body. We don't take anything with us. But we say in India, Kalihat Ayati, Kalihat Shalom. You come with nothing in the hand and you leave with nothing. But in the course of our life, we're acquiring, we're trying to, we're acquiring, you know, building our home, our empire. But at the end of life, we leave it. So, what do, but one thing which we do take with us, our, our whatever devotion, whatever bhakti we've developed in the course of this life, that will go with us to the next so this is very important to remember, to utilize. When we, when we appreciate this, then we'll make a point to utilize our time to do some devotional service. Because that is eternal benefit. Right? We say sanatanaka, eternal religion. So we, we want to understand the value of devotional service. Alright, any question? Comment? Yes? devotees transcendental. The life of the materialist is taken because he's engaged in material activities. But when the devotee is engaged in hearing and chanting, then that is time used in the service of the Lord. So that is not under the laws of material nature. When you already stop the service and you already well, it depends on what is your mood, what is your consciousness when you stop. You, you may, if you keep the memory of the Lord, and you keep the, the consciousness of the Lord, then you're okay. But if we hear and then just forget, then we're back onto the material platform. That is why Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, Kirtaniya Sada Hari. Always chant the Holy Name. Always chant. Last night, a lady came with the vest. Did you see that? She was wearing the t shirt. Kirtaniya Sada Hari. I don't know where she got it from, but. She was having that t-shirt. So, so maybe you must be uh, always must be engaged in service. Yes, we have to always be engaged in devotional service. Yes, Krishna says always remember. Smartam yam sat, smartam yam satatam Vishnu, Vishmatam yacha. Always remember Krishna. Never forget. So this is the principle of devotional service. That's the, the primary regulated principle. The one regulated principle over all regulated principles. To always remember the Lord. Always remember Krishna or Vishnu. Smartavyam satatam Vishnu. Vishna Vishmartavyam Jatu. That is the essence of all the scriptures. 
all the Vedas, they're all teaching the importance to remember the Lord, to remember Vishnu or Krishna. Never forget him. So it's that's why we should chant. We should chant and we should remember. And the gopis, they're always singing songs about Krishna, right? When they're serving the cows, they're taking care of the cows. They're singing songs about Krishna. And they're, remember, they're singing about Krishna's pastimes. The gopis are always remembering Krishna. Mother Yashoda, Nanda Maharaj, they're always thinking of Krishna. Maharaj, huh? You know, when a devotee is alive, so he has many property, he has son, you know. And as you say, when you die, you get nothing. So everything it belongs to Krishna. So if this devotee gives his property to his son, which is not a devotee, you know, the, for his will, and this devotee when he passes away, his father is a, uh, a devotee of Lord Krishna, will he have to come back again? Because his Krishna property, you know, giving to them, even though he has to do his prescribed duty. But will, will, will the, the son have to come back again? Yeah. Born again. The, 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 the scripture say, we are thief, you know. It's all the love to Krishna. So you must use it for Krishna. Yeah, of course. Yeah, and then you come back again and pay back. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you have to come back. Okay, so for saying you have property, you have a big house, even the sun, all very take care, you know. And you should give the property to the proper temple. Yeah, Rupa Goswami, when he retired, Rupa Goswami, he divided this well. The five percent, huh? Fifty percent to Krishna. Yeah, fifty percent to the Brahmanas and twenty-five percent for family and twenty-five percent for his emergency. But he had a lot. He had a very big amount. So giving twenty-five percent for the family was enough. For them. yourself from it before the end of life. You got away from everything. You left everything. You gave your business and everything. So you're free. Okay, any other questions? Uh, normal people, how can we are, uh, uh, we are in this 
at the time that yeah, how the Kopi is already in Vrindavan and we have a lot of other commitment. There we all fix their mind, always in Krishna and we, how about ourselves, we have a lot of other commitment and all uh, uh, normal people. How can we? Well, gopis were also busy doing many, taking care of the cows, milking the cows, and cooking the milk, and they had their families, they had their children, they had their husbands. Gopis were also married women. They had many things to do, but they were all singing about Krishna. They were always anxious to see Krishna. to also sing about Krishna. You learn these songs, you sing songs, sing the names of Krishna, chant Hare Krishna mantra, you could be chanting. Even when you're doing many things, you're busy, but still you could be chanting. When you're cooking, when you're doing the laundry, when you're doing cleaning, whatever you're doing, you can be chanting. You can be hearing. Everybody has a, some kind of tape recorder or something. You can hear the music, you can hear kirtan, you can hear the bhajans. So you have to arrange. You have to practice. The mind goes away, bring it back. The mind goes away and then bring it back. Keep on training the mind to remember Krishna. So, make it very difficult. But Krishna is it possible by practice. You have to practice. And you have to let go. Don't be attached. Abhyasena to kontiya vairagena chakriyate. In Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, Abhyas, practice. And vairag, detachment. So these two things are important. You have to let go of all your material attachments by remembering Krishna, by chanting. So practice, take some practice, but you can do it. Just have to keep practicing. Okay, Shrimad Bhagavatam ki jai. Yeah.